Hi foodie friends, Jessica with Savory Experiments here and today we are working with my favorite ingredient, the potato. Because basically they are like a blank slate waiting to get painted and today we are going to magically paint them into homemade Cajun fries. But before we do, make sure you like, comment and subscribe because we love to hear from you. It makes my day so much brighter. So today we are going to be making Cajun fries. We are going to be working with russet potatoes. Russet potatoes are super high in starch and low in moisture, which makes them ideal for making things like potato chips and you guessed it, french fries, even potato wedges if you're not into frying. So let's get started. I went ahead and washed these. If you are working with potatoes, rinse them, scrub them well. Do not skip that step. Potatoes grow in the dirt. And if they grow in the dirt, that means they are covered in dirt. And if you don't want said dirt in your dish or in the sauce or the water or whatever it is you're working in, you need to make sure that they are really good and clean. Now for this recipe, we are going to peel them. So I washed them just out of precaution and now I'm going to peel it. So hopefully we won't have any left. And I'm doing this super, super slow because I am wildly afraid that I'm going to cut myself with a wipe peeler on camera because I can't do two things at once, okay? I would peel about five to six of these russets depending on the size and how many people I'm serving. This one's actually a pretty small little guy. So I'll probably do closer to seven or eight. If you get the massive ones, you know, the ones they make at like steakhouses for baked potatoes, you probably don't need to do as many. I'm gonna start by cutting it in half so it's not wibble wobbling all over the place. You see I have very technical terms for this. And then I'm gonna cut this in half again, but stack it on top of each other. The trick here isn't necessarily that they need to look like perfectly cut french fries. If you do have a fry cutter at home, man, use it. This is the perfect opportunity but that I want them to be a similar shape, a similar width. So when they're frying, they all fry at the same rate. We don't end up with some that are super soggy and overdone, while others might be a little taunt still in the middle. Okay, go ahead and take these out there. From a decent size, but not too big. And there we go we've got ourselves some french fries, okay? I am going to take these and put these in this bowl that I have over here. This bowl, just salt water, that's all it is. While I'm making fries, because I'm peeling them so slowly, potatoes have the tendency to oxidize. Oxidizing potatoes just means that, I'm gonna cut that little guy separate, otherwise it won't be the same size. Oxidizing just means that they're gonna turn brown because the oxygen is now in contact with all of those little potato cells. It doesn't mean it's bad, doesn't mean it'll taste bad, it's just kind of unsightly. So if you block the oxygen from reaching those cells, like putting it into a vat of water, you will not have that problem. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up with these potatoes and put them in my water, and I'll see you in a minute. Our next step is gonna be making our Cajun seasoning. If you don't wanna make a homemade one, go ahead and just grab a jar at the store. I like making my own primarily because then I can adjust the salt. And you know me, I love salt, but some are a little too salty and they use an iodized salt, which to me has a metallic aftertaste. I am going to use a little bit of coarse kosher salt and actually not too much. You can always add more salt to your fries after they're done and not everybody likes the same amount. My husband does not like salt as much as I do. Okay, I'm gonna add a little pinch of cayenne because it wouldn't be Cajun fries without a little zing and a little zang. Same goes for paprika, but this is a smoked paprika. So it has a lovely smoky aroma. And it's also going to, along with that cayenne, give the signature red hue that Cajun seasoning has. That was dried oregano, very common in Cajun food. This is onion, let me smell it, onion, and this would make garlic, there we go. Make sure you smell your seasonings, the dried herbs and spices before you use them. If you don't use them that frequently, they can start to lose flavor the moment that you open the jar. In about six months, they just taste like sawdust. If you can smell them, then generally they're still good. So I always give them a nice whiff before I use them. Although onion powder and garlic powder, I go through constantly and very fast and freshly ground pepper. Just give that a little stir. 
and set it aside. We'll need that after they come out of the fryer. Next is taking our fries out of this bowl of water. If you didn't do that, then skip this step, perfectly fine. I'm gonna take them out and blot them dry because what happens if you put really, really wet food of any kind into hot oil? Bad things, bad things happen when you put wet food into hot oil. I've definitely been the recipient of a few splats and burns and today, I don't want that to happen to me. I made it through the Y peeler unscathed on camera. I'm gonna make it through frying on camera without any little blisters on my arms or worse, right? Okay, let's get them good and dry there. Just pat them dry, a few paper towels, and let's heat up our oil. Hi, foodie friends. So we have got our oil going over here and I have a digital thermometer in it. I want to make sure that the oil is the right temperature instead of just guessing. If it's too hot, the fries will burn and the inside won't have enough time to cook. If it's too low, it'll be in there too long and it'll just start to disintegrate. And you don't want either of those things to happen. We are looking for deep fat frying around 325 to 350. First batch around 350 is, is an okay temperature because as soon as I put the fries in, they are cold. They're gonna decrease the temperature of the oil. I am going to play around with the flame as I watch the temperature to make sure that it stays as steady as I can possibly make it. If you have something like a fry daddy or a fry machine at home, this is an excellent time to use it because it will monitor all of those things for you instead of doing it manually. Otherwise, just get a thermometer, you're good to go. It's also good for candy making. I have what I call a fry spoon, but some people call it a spider spoon or a wire spoon. And I am going to gently lower these in. Word to the wise, don't crowd the pan. You don't wanna to put too many in at a time because the oil will drop in temperature, but also they won't have room to circulate. The oil can't move around them and then they're not going to cook evenly. Let's go. You hear the sizzle? That's what we're looking for. Right now there are too many bubbles for me to be able to tell you what is happening, but I'm just glad I didn't get burned, right? Mission accomplished. These fries will only take about two to three minutes. That greatly depends on how you cut them though. If they are a thicker fry, they might take a little bit longer. And if you did more along the lines of a shoestring, it might take a little bit less, but it's relatively quick and fast. It doesn't take long. And there we go, guys. Look at those gorgeously brown fries. I'm actually gonna, I like mine well done. We're gonna put them in for just a couple more seconds. We didn't lose too much heat, so that's good. Next, we're gonna take them out and put them on a wire rack with paper towels below it. What this does is it lets the oil drain off without the fry sitting in the oil, which is what it would do if you just put it on like a paper towel lined plate. Okay, perfect fries. Okay, foodie friends, we're at the last step and we are almost about to eat these amazing fries. I've finished off a small batch here. If I was making a large batch, I'd go ahead and put those in the oven so that they didn't get too cold. Unfortunately, potatoes do tend to lose heat kind of fast. You want them to stay hot. So my son says hot is best. He likes all of his food screaming hot, like so hot I can't even, I can't even touch it. It's amazing. It's like his superhero strength. Move that aside. And while there's a little bit of oil on it, we're going to sprinkle our homemade Cajun seasoning. Just a little bit since I didn't make an entire batch here. I don't want to overdo it. And simply toss them. You could also sprinkle it over them while they're on the wire rack if you don't want to toss them, but if they're good and crunchy like they should be, you shouldn't do much damage tossing them like this. Like an already can already smell that smoked paprika. It smells so good. Mm. There you guys go. From my kitchen to yours, enjoy your homemade Cajun French fries with a little zing and a little zang.